solo leveling episode 5 will piss you off. That's right. We got scammed by Mr. Huang Dong Suk at the end of the episode. Let's see what Mr. H. Brandon has to say. Boy, will episode 5 of solo leveling get you heated, but it has you so excited for more. Yes. That group of six, I can't wait for their downfall. Whether or Because, <sighs> like, the spider fight, the boss fight, yes. The boss fight will be an important scene next episode. I'm sure there's going to be great animations and great voice acting. But I think what a lot of people care more about ran fighting a random NPC boss is the confrontation with the rest of the people outside that trapped us in here, right? What are they going to do when they find out that we're still alive and we didn't die from the spider? What about the loot? What's going to happen, right? Or not, they get what's coming to them fully, which is mm. them being left behind for dead and actually dying as... That's the thing. Are we going to actually kill them? Will they die? Can Sung Jin Woo do this? And I asked this because I think any news or some other people were talking about Sung Jin Woo's progression of his mentality and his psyche. And apparently he becomes like pretty cold. So this could be like the turning point of sweet little boy Jin Woo versus like cold, ruthless K-pop idol. Who knows how many helpless poor bastards have they murdered along the way. In mm -hmm. hindsight, I should have seen it coming. But I was so distracted by this kid in a shiny suit of armor. That is credit card, baby. That I thought he would be the infuriating one. Because anytime I see a character who you can tell doesn't belong and that rich mommy and daddy bought them a bunch of really mm -hmm. expensive equipment, they're either going to be insufferable and yeah. act like they're better and then... That's the thing. Spoiled kids get a bad reputation because they're insufferable and they act like they're better, just like Brandon says. But Jinho is... Totally different. He's a very good kid. Polite manners. He's humble. He doesn't flex his daddy's credit card saying, Oh, look at this fancy armor I have. No, he doesn't say that. He's like, Big bro, get behind me. I'll protect you. I love this kid. Get killed. Or they're going to try to charge in and we're going to have to save their ass. I was so distracted by this character that I ignored all the red flags. Completely. The idea of sign the contract. You get yeah. two million. Sure. The quota, you don't get the loot, but you give 2 million won. It's like, hmm, what's going on here? There's some stipulations about no healer either. Hmm, what's going on here? Maybe not getting certain types of drops, but at the end of the day, it was basically, we can't go into this dungeon without filling a quota and we have no healers. In hindsight, should have seen it coming, but I was literally so distracted because every time I've seen a character in shiny armor like that, they're always the infuriating or bad one. And instead, this dude was such a sweetie, just looking after yeah. our boy, trying yeah. to be encouraging him, but honestly listening to everything he had to say. And then once the whole ant situation comes in, they seem generally like, oh, thank you, bro. Like, we would have died potentially without you calling that out. And then they leave him and this dude just stranded to fight Kumiko from So I'm a Spider, So What? I didn't hear any of that! And uh, they are just scum. They're pure, unfiltered filth and mm -hmm. holy hell man the fact that why would they need two people if they constantly don't have a it's like they're leading that logic between how like they left us behind is crazy because it's like oh we forgot to bring pickaxes oh my bad my bad but let me just go to my car outside yeah so all the rest of us are gonna leave the dungeon and we're gonna get some gearing we're gonna come back you guys sit right here. Oh, yeah. Jin Ho, you're, you're a first time uh, doing this dungeon, right? And then Jin Mu, this is your first Seagate, right? Trust us. Just stay here in the boss labyrinth. Yeah. Just, nothing else is going to happen. Don't worry about it. It's like, are you serious, bro? Are you fucking serious? Leaving them for dead or striking them down, and then they only have to split it six ways. But lucky for us, we might it's only, only one pickaxe, it not ways. eight pickaxe. Unfortunately, we might not have to split it at all if this poor bastard ends up getting killed. I hope not, but what an incredible episode. And the best part is it's not even the action and the adventuring in the cave that makes it such a good everything about the show is so good to me and why I think it's becoming one of the best power fantasies I've seen. I, of course, have a full live reaction. The glaze on solo leveling continues, but I absolutely agree. Check his Patreon out, guys. Episode 5 of Soul Leveling over on my Patreon, so if you want some full and good thoughts, they're over there if you're interested. Now, there's a lot of greatness with the action, with the exploring. Mm. Our boy has grown at least a foot, and he's ripped. Something changed between last episode and this episode, episode 5. Something fundamentally changed. Like, his hairstyles completely changed. He's like fucking... He used to be like 5 foot nothing. Bro, he's like 6 foot 2. He's like a giga chat. Muscles are rippling. The muscles I can get based on, you know, putting strength, like your stats, right? If you're gonna give me the... If you're gonna actually attempt to give me a logical, you know, justification on how he actually got the muscles, yes, the strength makes sense. 
But how the fuck did his facial construction change, huh? How the fuck did he start changing his entire face, the hairstyle? Okay, that he can get a haircut. The height? What about the height, huh? I guess he's cause he's leveling up and maybe it's because I, I don't fucking know. Does that mean he could continue to get taller? I don't know. The point is, I'm just saying this for the content, just for the memes. You don't have to fucking logically justify how he actually turned into this K-pop idol. Beyond belief, he uh, he's making nurses in that hospital need a mop bucket near them. If you catch my, I need your number. They are dripping. Drift. He's sketching uh -huh. digits, and honestly, the misunderstanding of the digits actually doesn't come across as socially awkward in the way that he's just clueless about women. But generally, kind of made sense given that. He yeah, he never had these kind of attention from girls except Juhi. So it kind of makes sense why he would assume that, oh, this like getting a number is like, oh, you're just giving me your, give me your test results? All right. Not aware that the nurse's panties in front of him is fully fucking flooded. In the hospital, oh, it's probably something to do with, well, this or that. But I love the fact that for me, the thing that makes soul leveling so great, it's not even the action stuff. And like, that's what gets me with the hate. Not the action stuff. I like the things that happens after the action stuff. The action stuff is great. Don't get me wrong. But what I like is seeing other people's reactions to Sung Jin Woo doing the action stuff. That is the core of the power fantasy, seeing other people's reactions, how they perceive this character. I thought he was just weak. What the fuck? He just saved our lives. Stuff like that, you know? around soul leveling is they act like people only watch or read a show like this specifically this one because of the action but as much as i like that stuff not half really of the content i've discussed over these videos is stuff outside of action it's the characterization it's the world building it's yeah. the exploration of the menu system and everything the best part to me out of anything in this episode was actually like the first six or eight minutes of the episode just seeing his new body seeing how he's so different how he's actually being smart about things okay I think Mr. H. Brandon really liked the push-up and the sit-up scenes. I shouldn't just put Rippling. everything into strength because even if I can one-shot it, if I can't hit things, then it's not going to work out. The Agility. is avoiding more intelligence. Whether that's a bad thing or not remains to be seen, but his mind is, I'm not a mage. So I'm going to put more into stuff like agility and the hell so mm -hmm. I can deal and be dead. I really wonder what would happen if we start to put more into intellect, right? Because if int is obviously like the, like the mage, you know, mana, magic, strength, whatever stat, but... If we're going to go with the term, with the theme that the more, you know, stats you put in, the more you actually change as a person, int would then affect your actual intellect, your, your IQ, where you start being, become so smart that he starts to make better decision making, all his choices, all the answers to any problems he can just solve. What, what would happen like that, huh? Dealt damage. Everything about his character is making sense, but it's the little moments about how we can casually go from the show looking like it's a pure fantasy through and through to us looking at a talk show on TV. Yes, I actually enjoy that they showed us this talk show to make us, and even the magazine. There's a fucking magazine with Mr. Beck, Guildmaster Cho, uh, Guildmaster Che, my bad, and then Cha Hae In, right? The three, like, I guess, s rank hunters, that's like the face of Korea's uh, Hunters Association or whatever, right? I Actually, actually hunters, whatever. They, they, they are like the face of the Korean hunters, right? Showing us stuff like that outside the world really fascinates me because it makes us kind of more immersed and the world building expands. You get to understand the culture here and how they're treated like actual idols. I think it's fascinating. The, the half the people who fight feel like they're in a modern setting. Half the other yeah. people feel like they're in a medieval like setting. There's so much little moments throughout an episode that makes me so captivated by this world. And the fact that it's not just, oh, here's a gate anyone goes through. I like his new jacket, by the way. Yo, yo, the drip is coming on. I don't know where he got this new jacket from, but I guess with all the new money he's getting he can buy some new clothes there's rules there's limitations how many party members this or that the thing i'm kind of hoping at some point will happen in this show is that he'll do so many crazy things he'll be exposed like say like at the end of last week's episode but he got out of there before anyone realized and also he didn't think he did anything that impressive like i talked last week but if he does crazy enough things and he gets his reading done again and he's still classified as an e-rank but i doubt it the i'm not sure we're, we're trying to avoid that right now huh we are trying to avoid getting a reassessment of our power because if they kind of start to realize that holy shit he grew is this second awakening but then he checks again and is like oh wait you grew again you know it's the i don't think the government or the other people would take too kindly to that 
Maybe they would. Maybe they're like, holy shit, you are one of the most special hunters ever, and Korea needs another hunter like you to like and you know, like uh, surpass all the S rank. We need. It's like an arms race, right? So, will the government be happy that Sung Jimu exists, or would they? I don't know. Do experimentations on him? It, it just doesn't feel like it's in our best interest to sail this shit right now. We should kind of try to be hidden. We should do some low key shit, but inevitably. As we start to collaborate with other hunters, as we start to clear these dungeons, as other people to perceive us as really strong, how will this be managed? That's the really interesting thing. Clearly his actual skill set is anything other than that. It'll be very interesting because I kind of assume whatever readings they do in this world, they don't represent whatever he's going through now. So he's probably going to be classified as a, a E rank forever, or if not a long time, but I'll be interested to see. If Until the next time we actually get measured, because like this is just like a driver's license that we have, right? The world would have to adjust, like give him an S rank, because even if we're reading him as an E rank, this man so You know what? That would be a pretty cool concept that he just remains an E rank forever, but then somehow he just goes in and he just like saves people but there's like a limitation right e ranks can't you know do higher level quests we can't even do higher level gates so i wonder how that's gonna happen if we're if like 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 think about it if like he starts to pop off in these dungeons and maybe people are like holy shit the sung jimu guy's really strong how is he then going to be able to take on newer gates because if people are saying, holy shit, this guy's really strong, please, we needed his help in a different gate, but he's still E rank, you know? There's a limitation, there's a restriction. But I do like the idea of like an E rank hunter, like saving like S rank hunters, you know, on paper, just even though he might be stronger than an S rank, you know, just like the concept of like the lowest E rank, I still consider like an E rank saving everybody. I, I, I do like that fantasy. Following bosses like it's nothing i mean it would be interesting to see something like that and those are the moments that keep me super interested in soul leveling yeah the action's fun yeah it's very well produced i mean we had a giant snake-like beast that we fought last episode mm -hmm. and it was all 2d hand-drawn and once again no cgi like for a giant spider monster like that's pretty impressive all things considered for such an action-heavy show and the fact that my favorite parts are just watching his character evolve, the fact that I want to root for him, the fact that I think he's an enjoyable character, yes. and most importantly, you're turning tropes and traits I usually despise. Big fancy suit of armor, kid looks like he's about to run face fur into Satan's ball sack and get killed, and instead I'm like, can we please protect this cinnamon roll? Again, it's tropes and cliches and other things. They are simply just tropes. It's all at the end of the day, how they execute or deliver on that trope that either makes you feel really good about it or you might think that it's another cringe thing. Well, he got lured into such a shitty situation. How many of these dumb bastards have this happened to? Let's keep them safe and cut all their other heads off. Along yes, the way. I I'm down. Hope what's going to happen is he's going to solo that spider. Go yes, solo the spider and they come back and then they're like, oh, you want to split the loot? Nah. We kill them and we move on. But we can't really start killing them right off the bat, right? I hope Hwang Dong Suk and his boys tries to like sneakily like backstab us while we're like looting. It's like, okay, we can just save the loot. And we start doing this. And Hwang Dong Suk and their group is like, hmm. The red eyes light up again, just like in the anime episode. They start shit. Now it's self defense. We didn't jump him. This is a self defense. I hope we go down that path. We kill him. Fucking move on. No one will know. No one will know. Well, no one will ever know, right? Because if we de defeat this dungeon and we get out, the gate closes, right? Uh, there's, that's how they got away the entire time, right? The Hwang Dong Suk's group, right? Because if not, if there's like some kind of like admin or some kind of like a referee from the Hunters Association side that comes in to check on the bodies, I'm not sure actually. How would that work? Regardless, I hope we fucking kill him next episode. They'll split it two ways, all's well that ends well, and they'll just discover all those guys' bodies just dead on the way back. That's what they deserve. Not because like, oh, maybe we can say that the spider did it. They died. Yeah, maybe you can have a story that this boss spider killed them. Then we got to be very careful about the type of injuries that we do on them, right? Uh oh, well, this is their first like how many people have they done this? They said this isn't their first rodeo. So how many people have they left for dead? And this isn't the only group who's going to do something like this. And that's what they deserve. The action was little. There wasn't a ton of it. But what we had was my favorite action was Sung Jin Woo doing a little donkey back kick without even looking at the bug that was approaching him. That was a pretty cool scene to me. It was interesting. I mean, our boy, he kicks out like a soccer ball from behind, man. Yep. It was just so good when that one ant tried to jump him. But I like how you can tell it's not just like a physical.
physical thing about him being so much better. His ear and his instincts are so much sharper. There's Perception. hundreds of holes, if not dozens of holes, where all those ants could jump out. He pinpoints the exact accuracy, and that's why they probably didn't get as many wounded. I mean, now knowing what I know, he probably should have said nothing, kept Buddy safe, and let them be eight. But you know what? We are where we are. And the fact that, I don't know, just like the way he responded, like, hey, man, thanks. I Without your instincts there, we could have been really screwed. My guard was just dropped. And I think it's mostly due to be me thinking that the scumbag would end up being the dude in the armor. But it Bro is a fucking hater for Jin Ho in the beginning because of daddy's credit card. But I think that I was sketch of Hong Dong Suk when uh, there was two, two scenes, two specific scenes where it was like a still frame of Hang Dong Suk, but his face was like shaded in like a dark way. There's two distinct scenes and I was like, oh, oh, I see that. What's up with this guy? Then later on, the way that he just smiles with his eyes closed. And of course, after the betrayal, you can actually see the red in their eyes, which is a little bit too obvious. Apparently in the webtoon, they did show the red in their eyes throughout the entire, like from the beginning. So it was very obvious, but the anime tried to kind of make us guess like, is this guy sus? What's going on here? Is he going to betray us or not? Instead, like they just caught me off guard. And as soon as we approached that cave, I was like, oh man, we got to go get equipment. We got to go get lunch. We got to go do the- Oh, and, and the best part was- the little charade that they did is like, oh, boss, I can't believe it. I forgot the pickaxe again. Oh, you dumbass. You keep doing this for the last 27 times. You know what? Let's go pick up the pickaxes again. Like that story, that little little act they did, like, bro, the role play plus one. This or that. And it's like, bro, you have to be shitting me. These scumbags. Yeah. But that's what you want to see in a show like this. You want to get mad at characters trying to stab you in the back. You want to be sweating, wondering, are they going to be okay? Because in this situation. And you would think, if you're trying to save time, you should send a non combatant, Sung Jin Mu, out to get those pickaxes because he's not supposed to even be fighting here, right? So if you want to save some time, why don't you guys fucking fight the spider? Let me just go back to the car, get the fucking, you know, pickaxes. So by the time you kill the spider, I'm back with the gear everything's efficient but it's like come on come on you're gonna leave the non-combatant and this new kid that's his first time doing a dungeon in the boss's lair while the rest of the fucking party leaves like come on like try to be a little bit more discreet situation it's not about our boy being safe we know he'll live it's this poor bastard who got dragged in and has been so nice to he tried to look he i think jin ho has been introduced in season one. I mean, sorry, episode one. There were some scenes where he was already getting his like, assessment as, as, as like a new hunter. I find it hard to believe that he's going to die protecting Sung Jin Woo. I mean, let's say that he does do that and he dies and there's some kind of emotional reaction from Sung Jin Woo to, to then get like explode to motivate him to get better. But I feel like he's going to be fine. And we're seeing him do all this shit right now to portray what kind of character he is. He's a good kid. He's even saying, don't worry, big bro. I'll protect you. I think he'll be totally fine. Sung Jin Mu will carry him. Little bro is going to be like, oh my god, you're so cool. And then we might, he might be one of our like first like quote unquote friends, maybe acquaintances that we make. I, I think that this kid is going to make it out alive. If he doesn't. It would be sad. It just doesn't make sense to use him as a sacrifice here because we hardly know the kid. How would we get an emotional response right now if you hardly know the kid, right? So I just don't feel like we're going to go with that path. You looked at our contract and said, hey, it shouldn't be split seven. It should be split eight ways. Smart kid, lawyer. And I'm like, protect this man at all costs. Yes. He's probably dying, but protect him at all costs. No, God don't, don't say he's dying. I'm pissed off, but so happy all at the same time because I'm so infuriated by those characters, but so happy about how good the writing has actually been for a pure power fantasy through and through. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on this week. One last thing Mr. H. Brennan didn't talk about is Mr. Huang Dong Suk's little monologue as he found the billions worth of one in the mana crystals, right? He said, hmm. My little bro, he was thinking about his little bro, like Huang Dong Su, right? He's like, hmm, I have my own way of doing things too. There seems to be a little bit of a rivalry, right? And they were introducing these themes of seven S rank hunters in Korea, right? And if the other people were hyping up this little bro from Huang Dong Su, could he potentially be an S rank hunter? And if so, what would happen if we end up killing these motherfuckers next episode? Would the little bro be upset? I'm not really sure because if they're actually on bad terms, I don't really see the little 
bro getting upset and coming after us. But this definitely sets up some interesting things for the future. Fantastic episode. I hope next episode is going to deliver. And goddamn, I don't want to let him just like leave. No, we're not going to split the loot. We got to cut their heads off.